In this video, I'm going to walk you through the build of a simple RF power and SWR meter. It's a pretty simple project that you can build using junk box parts you might have lying around. In the last video, I was using an oscilloscope to measure the RMS voltage and then calculating the power using a table for quick reference. It's a bit inconvenient though, it's much easier to use a dedicated power meter. I've also included an SWR measurement feature that helps you to know whether your load's a good match for the amplifier. Let's look at the circuit. There are two basic building blocks. The first is a Stockton bridge, which is a device used to measure power and SWR. The Stockton bridge outputs two voltages representing the forward and reflected power. These are fed into a simple diode detector, which is connected to the ADC input of a microcontroller. From these measurements, the microcontroller calculates the forward and reflected power and the SWR ratio. When I first read about the Stockton bridge, it seemed quite mysterious. How could it tell which direction the waves were travelling through it? How does it separate the forward and reflected wave? The simple answer is that it doesn't. It's really an impedance bridge. It's measuring the voltage and the current and using that to work out the impedance of the load. The rest relies on transmission line theory to predict how much of the wave will be reflected with any particular termination impedance. For most purposes, we just need to know whether the load's a good match to the amplifier, and that's what the SWR measurement's telling us. To see how it works, we can break it down into two subsystems. The first is a current transformer with a 10 to 1 turns ratio. The current in the secondary coil is one tenth of the current in the primary. The current gets split equally into the two branches, so each branch gets 1 20th of the current. The resistors act as current detectors, giving us a voltage proportional to the current. Now let's look at the other half of the Stockton bridge, the voltage transformer. This time, a 10 to 1 turns ratio means that the voltage in the secondary is one tenth of the voltage in the primary. In the left hand branch, we get a positive version of the voltage, and in the right hand branch, we get a negative version of the voltage. Each time, the voltage is 1 20th of the primary. Looking at the system as a whole, the voltages and currents are superimposed. In the forward branch on the left, they add together, and in the reverse branch on the right, they cancel out. If the load resistor is exactly 50 ohms, then the current and voltage waveforms in the forward branch add together to be one-tenth of the primary voltage. And in the reverse branch, they cancel each other completely, giving a voltage of zero. If the load resistance is larger or smaller than 50 ohms, then the waveforms won't add perfectly in the forward branch, leaving less than one-tenth of the voltage. They won't cancel each other out perfectly in the reverse branch either, giving a voltage greater than zero. Similarly, if the load is inductive or capacitive, then the voltage and current waveforms will be out of phase and they won't cancel each other perfectly. This is representative of the way a transmission line works. If a 50 ohm transmission line is terminated with a 50 ohm load, then all of the power will be transferred to the load and none of it will be reflected. If the termination isn't 50 ohms, then some of the power will be reflected. Most of the time now, we just want to know if we've got a good match. And that's what the SWR is usually used for. Okay, so let's look at the circuit build. Um, as usual, I'm starting with a piece of copper clad PCB for the prototyping. I like to use the resin rather than the fiberglass PCB for this sort of thing. The resin isn't as strong as the fiberglass, but it's much easier to work with, and you can just cut it using a bandsaw. I started off using toroids to make the Stockton bridge but they were a little bit bulky and didn't fit in the enclosure very nicely. So I ended up uh, having a look in my junk box and I found this binocular core. It's a little bit on the big side, but still I think it looks a bit neater than using the Torade. To test the bridge, I temporarily wired it up to the microcontroller. I wrote some simple firmware to output the measurements to the serial port. I've taken into account the turns ratio, the resistor values in the potential divider, and the voltage drop across the detector diode. The Pi Pico uses a 3.3 volt supply as the reference for the ADC, which isn't that accurate. So I used a multimeter to measure the forward and reflected detector voltages and compared these to the ADC readings. I did this at a couple of power levels and used a simple linear interpolation to correct for errors. I don't have a calibrated power reference, but the reported power was very close to the oscilloscope, so it's giving a reasonably indicative value and it's probably good enough for the work I'm doing. Most of my projects end up needing to have some kind of menu-driven user interface, 
So I made some PCBs that have display and some buttons, and a few other bits and pieces that I find useful. I often find that the enclosure is the most expensive part of the project, but you can get really cheap PCBs. They're very strong, they're fire retardant, and you can get them accurately machined with a nice silk screen for next to nothing. I find that this PCB sandwich style of construction gives you a nice and neat enclosure without having to break the bank. In this very simple project, the PCB isn't fully populated. I'm only using it to hold the Pi Pico, the display and the batteries. I've just glued in the Stockton bridge and connected it up to the ADC input of the Pico. I'm quite pleased with the end result. I've put something together using parts I already had and I've ended up with a useful piece of test equipment. If you want to build an RF power meter, I've added links to the design and the code in the description. There are a whole load of similar designs on the internet too. It's the sort of thing you could build using pretty much any microcontroller. I've used the Pi Pico, but you could just as easily use an Arduino or whatever you've got lying around. The software is pretty simple too. It doesn't require much processing power. I've written the code in C++, but this is something you could easily code up in a high-level language like MicroPython. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've got lots of ideas for projects that I'd like to share, so if that's something that interests you, keep an eye out for updates. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.